Chris, one of the things I was thinking about to kick off the conversation, something we've publicly spoken about a lot was just just the cost that some of these autoimmune diseases have on the United States. Um, you know, I was I did the calculations. I was on a immunosuppress immunosuppressant drug called Remicade for about six years. And so I cost the US medical system $2.4 million personally. And I was doing some numbers. I, I saw that about 50 million Americans have an autoimmune disease currently. And that was absolutely astonishing, especially when you look at a graph and see how these things have exponentially increased over time. And you know, I guess part one is, do you think that 50 million person number is accurate? And secondly, what do you think are some of the leading causes of this insane spike in autoimmunity over the last 50 or so years? Well, the short answer is the modern lifestyle, <laughs> and we, yeah. we can unpack that. But um, that's definitely the 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 summary. And when when you uh, you know look into that, take a couple steps down, you've got diet as a huge factor, of course. And we now know that sixty percent of the calories the average American consumes come from not just processed foods, but ultra processed foods. So these this essentially like flour, sugar, and industrial seed oils comprise, you know, nearly 60% of calories that Americans eat today. And those foods uh, wreak havoc on the gut microbiome. They feed harmful bacteria and let those bacteria proliferate. That then can lead to leaky gut, intestinal permeability, which then provokes a systemic hyperactive immune response. And that's, of course, auto, autoimmunity in a nutshell. So that's, that's a major factor. Um, lack of exercise dysregulates the immune system. Not getting enough sleep is a huge immune disruptor. Um, chronic stress uh, has a big impact on the immune system. The proliferation of environmental toxins, whether we're talking about heavy metals like lead, mercury, arsenic, cadmium, or uh, pesticides and herbicides, like glyphosate being a, a notorious example uh, chemicals like uh, BPA, bisphenol A, things that are found in plastics, which uh, uh, or phthalates or PFAS, like these these chemicals are now ubiquitous in our environment. And even despite our best efforts, it's virtually impossible to avoid them completely because there are no hard boundaries in the environment where these chemicals can just be contained. Um, so even if you buy organic food and you know. You're certainly um, that's for sure desirable and and worth doing. There's going to be a lot less of those chemicals in those foods um, than there would be in conventional alter alternatives. But um, it is true that we just can't avoid some level of exposure at this point. Um, so when you put all those things together, it basically is it creates a, a set of threats to the immune system that the immune system um, just can't withstand. Uh, our immune systems did not evolve in an environment where we had all, you know, as, as many of those threats, certainly not all of them put together. And, you know, it can start from very early on, even in utero. Um, so it, when you combine the, the genetic predisposition, which can be, which is heritable, of course, that's passed down to, to subsequent generations, and then those environmental triggers on top of that genetic predispositions, you have a pretty potent recipe for autoimmune disease. And as you pointed out, um, 50 million Americans, so that's one in six. I've seen some estimates that suggest one in four women ha have may have an autoimmune disease now. There are over 80 autoimmune diseases that have been defined with the, that number going up significantly every year. Um, there's a growing understanding that diseases that were not necessarily traditionally thought of as autoimmune may have autoimmune elements. Um, so just like the more we learn about it, the more we understand that this is a really big deal. You know, it's, it goes well beyond what, uh, what we thought, it, it, where, where we thought it would be. Hmm. I'm curious where or what you would change if you had some sort of overarching power over, over the the healthcare system like where would you spend your time trying to fix things um would it be you know removing glyphosate from the food system or 
Would it be, um, you know, trying to lean into more organic real foods? I'm sure there's plenty of answers, but if you were given the the almighty power to be able to focus on one or two things, what sort of, uh, what sort of things would you be focusing on? That's a good question. Um, I think food would probably have to be the first one just because it's something we do <laughs> every day. Most of us at least and multiple times a day is eat. And if you're eating something that is hostile to your immune system or that's provoking or triggering an, a, an ex, a hyperactive immune response, then just the frequency of that is going to make a big difference. Um, and I think it's also the factor that affects the greatest number of people. Yes, environmental toxin accumulation is an issue, but it's it's not necessarily an issue that rises to the level where it could cause autoimmunity for the same number of people that for, for whom food is, you know, triggering or provoking autoimmunity. And I would probably say the same thing for, you know, virtually all of the other influences. They're all very significant, but um, food is probably the most common. And then of course, food is related to the gut, you know, what we eat influences and determines our gut health, which then in turn becomes the predisposing fact, you know, leaky gut or disrupted gut microbiome become predisposing factors for um, autoimmunity. So yeah, it starts with food. And for many people that might be enough. For some, they might need to take additional steps above and beyond that to address their issue. Yeah. So food is a, is a huge lever that you would pull and an incredibly important lever at that. You made me think, Chris, you know, when I think about the theme of this show, I would say regeneration is a theme that comes to mind pretty prominently. And I'm not just talking about regeneration of the soil. Um, you know, a lot of the regenerative farmers have been some of our favorite guests, but I also think in terms of the regeneration of health. And I think we've been amazed, you know, 270 plus episodes of doing this how many guests that have come on the podcast that have formerly been affected by chronic disease, autoimmune disease, et cetera. And by taking autonomy over the foods that they're putting into their system, different lifestyle practices, et cetera, they've proven that this body is an incredible piece of machinery and the body is actually capable of healing and restoring itself to the health that you ultimately deserve. 